welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen, and this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. It's episode number 80! <laughs> I don't know how long it's been since I started podcasting. Mm, no, I don't know, but um, episode 80, that's quite a milestone. And um, I actually think this episode is going to be a short one. Although you will know for sure. <laughs> uh, because I haven't knit all that much that I can show you. I have knit a lot. But uh, yeah, I've been working on three secret projects. And I cannot show you. <laughs> but uh, I do have some fun stuff that I can show you. Um, so this is the first week of the scrap along. The scrap along started last Sunday uh, on Valentine's Day and uh, February 14th and it is going on until April 1st and it's just been really really fun. It's been um, great to see people casting on stuff and being excited about spring cleaning their stash um, which I always find very satisfying myself and I'm always happy when there is a kind of scrappy make along or you know finish your stuff make along um, so that so that I can get things done off my list or in this case that I can clean up my yarn stash um, yeah and of course knitting scrappy things is super fun so um, yeah I'll, I'll share some more uh, pictures of what the community has been making. I'll share that later. Yeah, uh, first I'll dig into what I have been making. So the projects that I have been working on uh, are very small and they are new cast-ons so you won't have seen them yet uh, unless you follow me on Instagram then you will have seen them. So one is a new scrappy sock. Um, I cast this on on cast-on day for the scrap along which was last Sunday and I finished it last night on uh, Wednesday and I just think it's super fun so um, I knit my socks toe up with a German shorter heel and this uh, sock is exactly knit um, following the scrappy socks pattern that I have newly published. So that was published um, last week. So scrappy socks. The original scrappy socks were these. I'm sure you've seen those before. Um, and oh, they just make me so happy. And I wanted to cast on some more but then with wider stripes because um, Switching color every three rounds was kind of uh, not tedious, but um, uh, yeah, just not as easy, not as mindless. So for this one, I have um, kept the stripes quite wide. Um, this is just one yarn. And then, yeah. Yeah, so I've uh, kept them quite wide and some scraps I was able to just use up completely, so that was really nice. Um, and I have some really fun scraps that I can still um, work into this sock. I've used this one before here. So yes, lots of scraps. Um, I think this one is from a um, Regia Perfect uh, yarn. The Perfect I'll always start with uh, some yellow which they mean for you to cut out but I always like that so yeah. So I've just cast it off yesterday so I'm going to start the second sock and yeah I really like it I just um, this this yarn is um, noticeably thicker than the other yarns so yeah you don't notice it while you wear it but <laughs> but it was very tight to knit with 
yeah. So it's just uh, best if you have all of the same thickness of yarn. But yeah. And uh, I have used my weaving in ends method or my wrapping in ends method that um, I have a new um, tutorial for on my Patreon page and in a couple months I will put it here on my YouTube channel as well and in the Scrappy Socks PDF you'll find a photo tutorial. <clears throat> so all of these ends except for the ones in the ribbing and the one right at the beginning um, I can just cut off now without sewing them in because I've wrapped them in while knitting and that is just super satisfying. Um, yes, so I'm ex excited to start the second sock of this. Um, this pair will be a gift and I'm not telling you who it is for. <laughs> so I'm really excited to finish that pair. So that was make number one and let's mark that on my whip board. I've already written it on scrappy socks so I completed one so that's 50% done there we go Ta-da! oh and this reminds me um, do you remember the yarn tracker I showed you in my bullet journal which was inspired by uh, Sandra Cherry Hart from the Cherry Heart podcast. Uh, she has an amazing bullet journal and um, I think she has inspired many of us to um, do something more with our own uh, journals. And she had this yarn tracker in hers. And uh, so these are the yarns I'm using. These are the yarns I'm buying this year. And see, so you can see my Harry Potter socks my um, Toe of Gusset's Heel socks, my Stripey Rainbow socks, and here my Scrappy socks, and then the Spectre sweater. And then I have some uh, other pages where I track the actual um, grams used. So, yes, so I've updated that. Uh, so those were my scrappy socks and the other new cast on is a beret uh, for my mom I uh, started it I don't know this week <laughs> a couple nights ago it's a very quick make um, I think I've only worked two nights on this and I'm already decreasing um, so I've been at the widest point and now I'm going back uh, and then I do the I-cord bind off and then I block it and then the blocking is really where the magic happens. Um, <laughs> I really should show you these pictures. Um, before I've always joked that, um, hmm, am I making a boob or am I making a beret? So, uh, <laughs> and um, before blocking, it still looks like a boob. <laughs> And I just have to look at these pictures for you because they are too... <laughs> I've already found them. <laughs> okay, so this was uh, the beret that I knit for myself. So it was purple. And I put it on before blocking. And this is a kind of cautionary tale of, you know, you need to block your stuff. Because it makes a huge difference. All right? You're going to see my picture now of me wearing the beret before blocking. <laughs> Let's see if I can keep it still enough. Can you see that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I just thought that was super funny. Um, and here it is after blocking. So it looks much better. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yes, I'm working on the beret. 
the Bees Bees Beret by Sari Nordland. So this is my third time knitting this pattern. Um, something that I've modified on all versions so far is that for the little tail here, I've done round, one round less than the pattern says. And for this one, because it's for my mom, and my mom has a really tiny head, um, I made this. So uh, up until the edge where you know, afterwards you start decreasing. The pattern tells you to go until 15 centimeters. I only went until 13 centimeters for this hat. And also I'm going to block it on a smaller plate um, because that's what really makes a difference. The yarn is from uh, Atelier Het Wool Based, which is a Dutch indie dyer. Um, and I'm using one strand of um, I think it's a merino, um, I lost a tag, but um, it's a delicious yellow. It's just really, really be beautiful. And also one of her mohair. So Atelier has wool based. And this is her wool based fluff kit silk. Mohair. So this is a tap more green and um, they blend really nicely in the finished product. Yeah. And when I'm going to block this hat or when I'm going to wash it, um, I make sure that I kind of uh, rub the fabric so that hopefully it gets a little bit more fluffy and that these lines will be less visible. That's what I'm trying. So um, yeah, I think I will have it finished next week. Um, so I'll be able to show you. This is just a really fun project and um, it's surprising how how good a beret looks on people. Um, yeah, so I I was not a beret person and now I love them. <laughs> um, I will say with the mohair on your forehead it does can get kind of itchy so um, just beware of that. Um, if you're only gonna wear it for short walks then you're probably fine but if you want to wear it uh, for an entire day you might uh, get a little itchy. Um, yes, so um, if you have any suri lying around, um, I don't know if you can knit it with just the suri silk, but um, yeah, just something that is uh, has a little haze, but is also super soft. I would really um, be interested in how that would work for this beret. Yes, so that is the beret, and uh, I think I'm already at like 60% done, well maybe more even, because I'll only have to knit like this bit more. So maybe I'm even at 75%. Ugh, I just, don't you just love this color? It's beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to mark that for 75%. Because these things are really, really quick to make. Ta-da! <laughs> and you could even make a stripey beret for the scrap along. I think that would be really cute as well. And then put a small pom-pom on here. That would be so cute! Okay, so those were my makes. I still have some other makes to show you. First one is a sock that's going to be for me, but is not knit by me. <laughs> um, so my boyfriend is knitting me socks. I don't know if, if he was inspired by, um, by one of our last podcast episodes where someone asked, uh, does your boyfriend still knit? Um, uh, I told him that, that people were asking 
if he's still in it. And uh, for Valentine's Day, he got me this ball of yarn, uh, but he said, um, I'm going to be knitting you socks with it <laughs> so that I don't have to do it myself. And I just think that is super, super sweet. And um, yeah, so he started on Sunday and then, so now he has knit a two. And this is yarn by Regia. It is a cotton blend sock yarn. And this is their passion fruit colorway. Um, they have lots of fruit um, colorways. And I think it's really cute. Um, so I'll be excited to see how that comes along. He's a real, um, my boyfriend is a really fast learner, so. Um, yeah, but usually he tends to get bored with stuff once he knows how to do it. So now once he's passed the increases, uh, I wonder if he'll, uh, if this will keep his interest long enough. So we'll see. And he uh, knits a little bit tighter. So um, while I usually knit uh, with uh, 56 or 60 stitches in the round, um, he is using 64 stitches in the round for my size. Yeah, I just wanted to show you because I think it's really, really cute. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to show you more progress on that soon. Um, and then now for the scrap along. So um, uh, I have seen so many beautiful projects being started this week. I have seen um, scrappy sweaters, scrappy socks, a uh, hot water bottle, hot water bottle cover. <laughs> Um, a corner to corner blanket, a start of a, um, oh, I don't know what's, what the abbreviation stands for, but the VV Cal blanket, uh, by Cypress Textiles. Um, a Tunisian blanket, it's just, um, so, so many more projects and I'm loving seeing them in the Facebook group. So this scrap along is being held in my Facebook group, which is called New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. Um, we've seen a massive influx of new members. Uh, last week, I think we were at 500 something and now we are at 740 members. So that is amazing. Thank you all for joining. And, um, if you're not in there yet, please do come ahead and join us. Um, and there is one membership question. Just, you know, tell me what you like. Uh, if you like crochet or knitting, it's, um, it's not really a serious question. It's mostly just to weed out the bots. Um, so um, not that I've had any bots yet, I think, but just, you know, just in case. So please do answer that membership question and then I'll be able to let you in and then you can see all of all of the projects and then you can see the thread where I have the scrap along rules. So uh, for a scrap along your project must have five different yarns and um, three of those must be from previous projects. Um, and there are some more rules in there. So. Uh, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but they are in the Facebook group. Um, each, uh, each week I'm sharing a community queue, so a community question. This week it was about the Rainbow Seaways blanket, which you can kind of see down there. Uh, so I recorded a little video of how I crochet run repeat of that. And yeah, I'm just loving everyone's pictures and I'll put some pictures in right here.
been just so much fun to see people uh, sharing their makes uh, not only in the Facebook group but also on Instagram with the hashtag new leaf scrap along but if you do want to qualify for prizes then it needs to be in the Facebook group um, I will be creating a prize thread later in the month and then uh, you can put your pictures of your finished projects in there until April 1st and if your project is a new leaf designs uh, project so if you're following one of my patterns you will be able to enter your project twice for prizes and we have some amazing prizes already we have some amazing crochet and knitwear designers who have donated some PDF patterns uh, for the winners. So I'll be announcing those shortly in the Facebook group. And we have a project bag that is still on its way to me. I believe it's arriving later today, so I'll be showing that next week. And I am making some sets of mini, uh, of scrappy minis. So um, I was actually working on this this morning so I have made some minis of my own yarn scraps so I'm making two sets and who knows maybe I'll even make a third one but um isn't that fun so this is just the start uh, I'll be adding some more <laughs> and uh, I just think they look so pretty in skeins so these were all you know wind up, wound off in balls but uh, they are just so pretty in the skein and it makes for easier um, postage too so that's why I wound them into skeins and um, these are all sock yarns so um, you know I haven't weighed them or anything I don't know how much meters are on here or you know how many grams but uh, you can use them for socks and you know it's it's quite a bit actually I think it's more than 10 grams a piece but I haven't weighed them so yes, if you want to win one of these prizes, then do come and join us in the Facebook group and share your makes. And for now, that is it for my knitting. Um, I haven't been working on the handspun cardigan, um, although I did unravel it all today. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, frogging a project isn't fun but um, yeah I'll be starting that again soon um, and I wanted to give you an update on what I have been watching on Netflix because I thought that was quite fun when we did that last time so um, since last time I've been watching Firefly Lane I've just finished it last night so this is on Netflix there's one season of it now I'm not sure if there's gonna be any more um, and I do like it and there is some amazing knitwear in the show and uh, some crochet blankets um, because you know it also um, it stars two characters and they are shown in various phases of their life and uh, I think they're born in the 70s or something so uh, so when you go back to their childhood there's a lot of crochet blankets um, yeah, and I just think that's really fun. Do be warned, it has an open ending. So, um, kind of a cliffhanger ending. I was not prepared. So, <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers that there will be a season two. Um, yeah, but I just love uh, spotting uh, knitwear and uh, crocheted items in TV shows. Yeah, so now I will be looking for a new show to watch. I do still have Lupin. I've only watched one uh, episode of that and it was really fun. So yeah, but do let me know what you are watching. And uh, because I'm always on the lookout for recommendations. I, I don't have any, you know, Amazon Prime or and, and I don't have Disney Plus anymore. Um, and I wish I had stars with a Z at the end because uh, there was a new show starting last uh, Sunday with Sam Hewen and uh, Gray and McTavish who uh, are both starring in the Outlander series. So it's um, Dougal and um, 
Jamie, of course. Yeah, Jamie and Dougal, uh, they are going on a um, road trip through Scotland. And uh, yeah, it's just... <laughs> I wish I had that series. Um, uh, because it looks really fun. And I hope it will be coming to Netflix. Because uh, Outlander is on Stars and on Netflix. So... I'm hoping this uh, Men in Kilts will uh, be coming to Netflix too. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm gonna leave you with that. As I said, it was uh, it is a very short episode, but I thought why ramble on for any longer if I don't have any knitting to show you, right? So I'm just gonna let you get back to your knitting and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye!